Hey guys, uh, this is actually my first YouTube video and uh, featuring myself in almost 15 years. Um, my first was a review of the Samsung Galaxy Vibrant, uh, otherwise known as the Samsung Galaxy S1 uh, on T-Mobile. And ever since that point, uh, I've always time and time again thought that I wanted to review uh, or talk about products and share my thoughts and ideas on technology with others. Uh, I get so excited when I talk to others about technology or see new technology come out, uh, but I've never really went to a singular place to share my thoughts and ideas with others outside of social media and also talking with my friends too. Um, with all that being said, uh, this channel is going to feature hopefully a ton of content relating to technology. Uh, my biggest interests in technologies are computers, uh, speakers and headphones, gaming technology, and my newest hobby, which is actually custom mechanical keyboards, uh, which you can kind of see probably back here. Uh, I have a TKC Portico. I just built it. Um, and then I have a two, mo two mode 65s coming in um, and a Neo Element G67 coming in as well. Uh, I plan on keeping one mode 65 and then either selling um, the Neo element or the other mode 65, depending on which I like better. There also might be uh, some car content on here as well, as I've recently become really into cars after starting my full-time job right out of college. Right off the bat, I'll say my biggest inspiration for creating this video was Brian Phillips, uh, also known as Bad Seed Tech. Uh, I recently found his videos and not a single YouTuber has made me uh, more excited to watch their content other than Dave2D. Brian's videos mirror a lot of what I'm interested in talking about. Um, so he reignited this passion in me uh, so much so that I'm going to start making YouTube videos. With my intro on who I am and why I'm doing this out of the way, uh, let's get into today's topic of discussion. Cooler Master's new SFX power supplies. When I saw this tweet on Twitter, I was so excited because Cooler Master is planning on releasing a Platinum SFX power supply. Right now, Corsair is dominating the market with their SF750 uh, because it's super reliable, super quiet, and the headroom for um, wattage is actually 970 watts. Um, as you can see here, I'll show it on screen. It's from a Tom's Hardware review, um, which makes this thing a uh, powerhouse and fantastic for any current gen build. Um, it's almost as if Corsair could market it at 850 watts, no issue, uh, without making any changes. Um, but I'm not too familiar with how all of that works, so take that with a grain of salt. However, I do know that the Corsair SF750 is an amazing power supply, um, as I have one myself in my SUP Mesolicious, which is right back here. Uh, I got it on just a static preset. It's like a gray, white. I'm not really sure how it'll appear on camera until I edit this, but uh, yeah, I'd love that case. Um, so if you guys are interested, uh, in a review or a deep dive on my thoughts on the Meshalicious, uh, let me know. I have a ton of thoughts on it, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Uh, it's really great. Uh, I love it so much. Um, it's it's one of my favorite cases that I've ever built in, and I built a, I built a lot of computers for my friends, but um, I built three for myself personally, and this is my favorite one so far. Uh, so. Moving on, uh, Cooler Master aims to seemingly overtake the entire high-end market uh, with their, drum roll please, their 1100 watt SFX and 1300 watt SFX power, or SFX L, 1300 is a SFX L, just to make that clear, uh, power supplies. Um, so we can see these are pretty standard power supplies from the spec sheet. Um, nothing really exciting to mention there. Uh, however, they offer these awesome high power wattages, which is really great. Now, I know what some of you guys may be thinking uh, right off the bat, that nobody would ever need this much wattage. 
um, let alone in a small, small, small form factor or SFF build um, if you're new to computers. Uh, however, I implore you to think about what this is going to do to the market. Cooler Master's power supplies uh, come with a 10-year warranty, which is standard on most power supplies. However, the SF750 only has a seven-year warranty, but with how reliable it is, people expect it to last longer than that. And if you guys have noticed I'm reaching towards my screen, it's because my prompter is messing up with some stuff. Um, but I should have that fixed in the next video. Uh, if you guys like this, uh, I'll hopefully do another one. Um, so yeah, should have that fixed in the next video. Uh, so tangent, but uh, Cooler Master is also making these platinum power supplies, um, which may seem like a buzzword to some. As usually anything, 80 plus gold is good enough for most, but when you buy a platinum or higher power supply, uh, you just feel like you're getting something better than everything else out there. Um, plus your bill will thank you too. Um, the market also mainly consists of uh, 750 watt SFX power supplies right now. Um, while EVGA actually just launched their 850 Supernova GM back in late May, um, and Cooler Master's previous V850 and V750 SFX power supplies were known for having a ton of reliability issues, um, as well as uh, fan noise issues and other issues on top of that. Um, even though the 850 could actually handle up to loads of 1,080 watts uh, which is roughly 127% of its max load. Again, according to a Tom's Hardware uh, review, which I'll have uh, probably on screen or linked down, down below. They claim to have fixed it in December 2020 or January 2021. You can read it in the Amazon reviews uh, of the product, or you can actually see it in Machine and More's video, uh, which I'll have that link down below. Uh, here's a screenshot of it goes over in depth, uh, really good detail on what the issue was with the product, um, what they did to fix it. Uh, he corresponded with them, lots of good stuff. Uh, you can go down there and watch it if you're interested. So user by the name of UCHX on underscore on Reddit, uh, they even suggested that Cooler Master could be using GAN in their power supplies, which would be huge. Um, as this would help regulate power better in the smaller form factor is even stated on Corsair's website themselves for their own product, which is the AX1600i um, that's providing better efficiency in a smaller form factor. Just like how uh, Anchor actually has used their super tiny Anchor Nano 2, uh, which offers 65 watts of charging in a super small form factor. I'll just have it shown here. I think they have it next to like an Apple charger and it's pretty much the same size, but it offers <laughs> what's 65 divided by five, uh, 11, 12, 13, 13 times more power. And it's basically the same exact size. Like it's awesome what GAN can do. Um, so honestly, with my limited understanding of how GAN works and it's implemented, um, I think this might be how they're doing. Um, so while on the note of GAN, uh, this would mean that power supplies could actually scale to huge numbers, um, just in my limited understanding of it. Um, in the 2000s and 3000s, uh, we're talking like crazy, crazy power um, with these and efficiency as well, uh, simply by just improving GAN's capabilities over, uh, over time, um, which is very exciting too, if you couldn't tell how excited I am about it. They're also using universal CPU and PCIe cable connectors on these power supplies, which isn't new, um, but in a world where high-end GPUs are starting to require um, three PCIe cables now instead of two, this is a welcome addition uh, for sure. Um, though this universal is, connector is not exclusive to Cooler Master's power supplies, as my Corsair SF750 has them as well, um, there's a long-standing debate of whether or not power supplies um, should have individual PCIe connectors uh, for each connector on the GPU, um, or if 
the Y splitters are okay, um, which you can read a really in-depth breakdown about here um, in the description. Um, if you're interested, it's pretty cool. I thought it was cool. Based off of that, I will side with having them as individually connected rather than using a Y splitter. Um, as in my personal experience, using a Y splitter on my 3070 actually caused it to have coil wine in my NZXT H1, whereas um, now with my Corsair SF750 MMS Relicious back there, um, I have two separate cables for my um, PCIe ports on my uh, GPU and have experienced zero coil, coil wine at all. And I'm, funnily enough, this is how much thermals matter um, and like getting proper power. I'm getting noticeably better FPS in games. Uh, just for instance, I just tested out a couple games, um, but the most noticeable uh, for me was uh, Borderlands 3, which now runs at 10 FPS higher um, at 2K max settings than it did on my NZXT H1, um, which only had a 650 watt power supply and it only had, for some reason, uh, at the time, I was only using it with the Y splitter, which was really dumb. But um, it was definitely drawing, if you read that link down below, it was definitely drawing more than 500 watts, which is like the max, based off that article alone, um, that's like the max those can output. So it's definitely pulling more large than that sometimes, um, which is why if you go on the website for the RTX 3070, uh, some models have a 750 watts rather than like 650 watts, which I think NVIDIA recommends 650 for the Founders Edition. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Uh, or I'll probably show a tidbit if I am wrong, um, just to clear things up. Wrapping up on the universal cable side of things, um, I think this is a standard that all power supply manufacturers should use moving forward. As I was between the Supernova GM850 and the Corsair SF750, and ultimately chose the SF750 over it because of the universal cables for my CPU and PCIe ports. With all that out of the way, I think it's safe to say that Cooler Master is on the bleeding edge of power supply tech right now with their 10 year warranty, uh, potential GAN support. Uh, Fingers crossed, hopefully fixed fan curve and noise level issues, which again, you can read about down in Machine and More's uh, video down below where I linked it. Um, universal CPU and GPU cables, an insane wattage for these uh, SFX power supplies they got going on here. Um, so I'll add that I'm not a really huge fan of Cooler Master. Um, in general, but I do appreciate I do appreciate um, innovation in this space. If you can't tell, uh, because innovation leads to competition, and with the resurgence of uh, PC gaming the past few years, and especially during COVID, um, that innovation and competition only benefits the customer and the end user, which is you and I. Um, so Cooler Master also announced some other stuff as well, but I'm not that interested in it. Um, however, if you are, uh, you can check out down below in the link in the description. They announced a lot of cool stuff, um, just not really for me. In closing, let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed the video or if you want to get into a heated internet argument on why this is the worst decision uh, or product idea ever. Uh, I'm all ears. Uh, so I'm just kidding, obviously, but feel free to leave a comment down below with any product suggestions um, you want to see, like the aforementioned Mesh Delicious back there. Um, awesome case. Would love to talk about it if you guys are interested. Um, or anything you want me to change with the video because I'm really new to this. Though I do have some video editing experience, um, I have very little. Um, so most of my videos would be pretty bare bones for a while while I figure this out. Um, if this is something I want to pursue further. Thanks again for watching guys and don't forget to like the video if you loved it and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Uh, have a good one. Peace.